Hello my dear Switch Watchers, it's Jordan here with a review of Arena of Valor, possibly the most popular game you've never heard of. Now I know what you're thinking, this game has only just been released, how could you possibly review it so quickly? Well you may remember a beta test for this game on the Switch a few months ago that I played to death, so I've played this a lot already and the full release is basically just the same thing. So let's get on with it. Arena of Valor, a westernized version of Glory of Kings or Wang Zhirong Yao in its native country of China is an absolute phenomena. With over 300 million downloads, at least from what I can see, it has Chinese people of all ages, boys and girls, students, accountants, all of them are glued to their phones to play Arena of Valor. Almost every weekend at my local shopping mall they have eSport competitions for the game that gather a large audience. It's crazy how popular it is and it has made Tencent, the publisher, one of the biggest heavyweights in the industry. While it has been made international on mobile, it's safe to say that it didn't have the push like it did in its own country. That doesn't stop this Switch port being an absolute coup for Nintendo, this is the game that could easily get Nintendo's foot in the country's notoriously difficult door. But how about for a western audience? As primarily an online MOBA, there is no story to speak of for Arena of Valor. It's all about the gameplay. Sure, all of the heroes do have a bit of a backstory that you can read it upon, but there's no overarching narrative to drive the game along. This is a 5v5 online battle game that's rather reminiscent of League of Legends by Riot Games, also owned by Tencent. In fact, similar isn't even the word, the layout is pretty much identical. Maps are divided into three major lanes with crossings between them. You have to choose which one you want to go for and according to well discussed and measured tactics, each lane is best suited to one of the handful of hero types. The goal of the main staple mode is to knock down all of the towers in at least one lane in order to be able to destroy the enemy's core and bring about victory. It's a basic take on the headquarters type of match that we've all seen before but it's the heroes that helps switch it up and the fact that you can't steam in without backup from your minions to distract the turret fire. The hero types have their own colloquial names but they end up being your pretty generic staple of fantasy genre. The damage sponge, the long distance fighter, a mage, assassin, warrior, pretty standard stuff and you'll certainly want to experiment with each of them. I was surprised at how well I got on with the default guy to be honest but I did enjoy trying out some of the others. I found most of them to be highly enjoyable aside from the fairy girl who seemed to perish in about two hits. They can all be customised with various loads out and abilities so it's definitely nice to experiment on occasions and try something a bit different. You'll find a large variety of stuff in Arena of Valor and it's probably a bit overwhelming at first, no doubt. Looking in various menus only to find a sweat inducing amount of things to look at and you'll probably sheepishly back away out of the menus and keep with the default settings. And that's fine, I was happily playing with the default settings for ages before I delved into some deeper customization. One of the major points of the gameplay is the leveling up during a match and upgrading abilities on the fly. You can purchase items with cash after defeating enemies and also upgrade one of your special abilities with every level up. While in the mobile version these are done by simple touch inputs, due to the control and necessity of the switch these are done by holding a button and then pressing another button. Slightly longer process at first but once you get used to it you'll be a master. Speaking of the controls, they are entirely controller based. I couldn't find an option to play using the touch controls the game was originally based around. Not that I ever would change back to using touch controls. Sure, they can make a couple of inputs slightly quicker, but the comfort and precision of a controller really elevated the game for me significantly. I had messed around with this game on my iPad once in a while, but it never clicked. Having real controls made everything fall into place. I actually really became invested in this one much more than when I dabbled it on the mobile original. If that's not a rousing success for a port then I don't know what is. I suspect veterans of the mobile game may take a while to adjust and will initially bemoan the mandatory control use but in time I think they will begin to love it like me. If you want to win online then teamwork is the absolute key to success in Arena of Valor. You can be a fantastic player but if your teammates run around like headless chickens like I love to do sometimes then you are sure to lose. I know this can be frustrating for some but this is often the case when it comes to online team based competitive multiplayer games. As this game is currently new to the Nintendo Switch matchmaking is pretty much a free for all right now as everyone starts from the beginning so it may take a while for things to settle down and for people to know what they need to do. Now while there's seemingly a lot of depth to a game like Arena of Valor 
That shouldn't fool you into thinking that it's inaccessible. There's nothing more daunting than looking at a how to play article or video before actually having hands on yourself because really it can be rather overwhelming and terrifying. Despite what the pros may say or feel, Arena of Valor is perfectly playable and rather fun for those who are new or don't care to learn the inner mechanics of the game well enough to compete on an elite level. You can still enjoy Arena of Valor on a casual level, which is certainly something that I prefer. The items, abilities and all of the counters aren't something you really need to know to enjoy the game. Useful, but not essential. For those wanting to get sucked into stats, spreadsheets and lots of time studying the game, and I know there's plenty of you out there that do love that, you'll be in for a treat. Arena of Valor can become extremely attractive and potentially addictive for players. Indeed, it seems to be one of those games that people dedicate all their gaming time to. For me, I'm perfectly okay popping in once in a while for a game here and there, but that's generally how I roll. I can see myself sticking with this one much more than say Fortnite for example. It's the perfect just one more match kind of game but enjoyable and there's always something going on. I actually found Arena of Valor to be an extremely thrilling and exhilarating game which was such a surprise for me. Taking out enemy heroes, destroying a tower and of course winning the match by destroying the enemy core all provided a huge rush for me. I found that there were matches where I had possibly the most exciting moments in my gaming time this year. When you somehow come from the brink of defeat to single-handedly take down the enemy's core to win the match and become the MVP, it's just wonderful. For a free game, I found this to be an almost exceptional experience. Despite all the different heroes and tactics, customization and such, you will find that there is an air of repetitiveness to Arena of Valor. While there are a few other modes, the concept is such a similar one throughout. You'll often have a rote impulse in what you're going to do in the game. Personally, I always found that I charged down the middle and I played a very similar sort of tactic, goading the enemy hero to take the bait before going on a counterattack. No matter how many times I told myself I would do something different next time, I rarely did. So in that regard, some will not like this aspect. As you can tell though, I found it rather addictive. It's worth noting that compared to the Chinese version, adaptions have been made for a Western audience with basic palette swaps of heroes. Instead of the classic Chinese mythologies, many of them have been taken out for a far more boring Western appeal. I should mention the netcode which I was thoroughly impressed with. I'm not entirely sure how these MOBA games are dealt with when it comes to the online, but this was exceptionally perfect for me. I'm always a bit worried considering my location and Nintendo's generally poor connectivity. But Arena of Valor was just about perfect in this regard. I did have one or two games where my ping was sky high and that did affect my performance, but those were rare occasions. In the audio, you've got a nice epic type of soundtrack, although it's not exactly something I noticed without listening to it. Apparently, there's been some huge contributors to this one, such as Hans Zimmer, but Lord knows if I noticed. It's decent though, as is the sound design overall. There's some decent voice acting and sound effects and they all sort of mash together nicely in the chaos of the action. I don't really have much more to say in this regard, it's just a solid attempt. Visually the game is okay for what it sets out to do, it has a cartoony art style that's not overly in the way of the action. Everything is perfectly recognisable which is important for learning and reacting. I will say that the icons and their amounts can be slightly overwhelming especially from a beginner's perspective. Navigating and identifying all of the heads up display may actually be the most daunting task for the uninitiated. There's not a whole lot of visual flair or variety, you'll be seeing the same things all of the time. Performance wise you're looking at something pretty rock steady, at least in the gameplay segments. Menus and loading can be a bit of a stutter fest and uneven at times which is a little annoying but not too important compared to the gameplay. Looking at my footage that I recorded, Arena of Valor's frame rate hovers above 30 frames per second, seemingly around 35 or 34 which I find slightly odd but it was smooth as far as I can tell. I don't think you have to worry too much about it stuttering here or there. For value, well, it's free. Of course, it's excellent value for money. There are microtransactions just as with any free to play game these days and it's not actually that bad considering. You may want to spend a few dollars here and there getting your favorite skin to help the developers. Not that the multi-billion dollar profits from this game need to be supported that much. You definitely need to download this game to try. It's free. Overall, if you're a Nintendo Switch owner, you'd be a little bit naive not to give this one a shot considering it's a free to play game. You never know, you may love it or hate it. Sure it has a repetitive yet unpredictable nature to it, so that's not for everyone, but I think if you give it a try you may actually fall in love with it. Starting off casually but then going deeper into the mechanics and the stats of the game can potentially suck you in. 
Not bad for a free game. I'm generally not into these kind of games, and I wasn't a fan of the mobile version, but the controls and having it up on the TV really pulled me in, allowing me to see the game in a different light. I definitely recommend giving it a shot, as it's giving me some of my most exhilarating moments of the year. 8.5 out of 10. Okay guys, thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review or found it useful in some way, then leave a like and comment below telling us what you think of Arena of Valor. Is it something that you will enjoy? If you're new here, then do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button and the little bell to keep up to date with all the latest Switch reviews, gameplay, and features. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.